After a dive one day, I went home, grabbed a beer, then hit the couch. I started to watch a video about the Continental Divide Trail. Needless to say, grabbed my attention. Next thing I know, I was on the computer looking it up. I couldn't believe I never heard of it before. I was mesmerized. And before too long, I was ordering my equipment, calling Jesse up, and telling him get ready for the adventure of a lifetime. Gotta get into Mexico, right? Gotta get into Mexico. It's where the illegals come through. Look at that. Okay, see this? Mexico. I officially went into Mexico. All right, so we're out of here, right? We don't have that much further to go, right? About 3,100 miles. We'll be there next week. Yep. Yeah. See you in a week. Just like that, we were off, and it wouldn't be long till our environment and its harsh reality set in. God, I was already thirsty. So we're heading outside of Lordsburg now. We're on, I believe it's Interstate 70 or State Road 70. Got about a five mile track to get up to the, uh, across the desert section. Now, if there's one thing that a long distance hiker despises, it's a road walk. And there was gonna be a lot in New Mexico. here in the uh, southern section just south of uh, Silver City and the uh, Gila National Forest and I got to tell you just climbed a thousand feet yeah still got about 500 more to go yeah we're at about 7300 feet now but uh, loving it it's a great way to build these legs up and our hiker legs back in order but uh, got to tell you it's a grind Thing. I think we ran into we ran into some wild cattle at 7,500 feet. Yeah, you ever heard of mountain cattle? <laughs> They're here. Trust me. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're back on I-90 going into S Silver City. It's about a 12-mile stretch, and uh, we have no water. But uh, we're gonna work it out. morning after that rough day yesterday we woke up this morning and our tents are soaked a lot of condensation I just got through wiping mine up with a sham wow and uh, I had to wring it out I still don't have it all
So you knew we were through hikers, huh? <laughs> I knew you were through hikers. I. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually I saw, you know, you have that, uh, I know when you guys are usually out, you're, I'm sure, dressed up in, you know, yeah. clothes and suits and, uh, yeah. suits and ties. Suits and ties. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. well, of course, of course. We, we, we almost missed the opening, so we came, we were over near this campground and, and t we yogi to ride off of two people and oh. we got in their car and the first thing that happened was the windows came right down. Oh. <laughs> Jordan Hot Springs and we're really loving this. You think that's a good site? Check this out. So we're huffing our way from uh, reserve to the trailhead up here. I'm thinking we're a few miles off and we'll be able to get back up to the uh, official route. Yeah, the way I'm reading this is uh, no domestic trash, but uh, you got any foreign trash, you can dump it here. You got to love the CDT. Uh, got down here and uh, Somebody stole the campground. <laughs> it's gone. We're tired. We're beat up. Feel like we've been rode hard and put up wet. Uh, we're gonna go to bed early tonight. Water. Trying to do, yo yo. I'm trying to hitchhike out of here. It's got to be a car eventually. The road to Pie Town was long, and we were both looking forward to a hot meal, warm bath, and a nice cold beer. really bad now. Can't wait to get to Pie Town. God, it's killing me. Spend the next two days in Pie Town eating, resting, and relaxing while listening to others regale us with their stories. But as all good things do, it would come to an end. And to be honest, I was looking forward to the rest of the trip.
bears trying to steal your bag. Do not feed the domestic life. So what do you think? What do you think about feeding uh, other people's animals? What do you think? It's a good idea. Well, I think uh, do that when they start getting back. What's going on around here? What are you doing over there? Hey! Hey! Hey, what are you doing there? Hey, what you doing there? Don't be David. Don't be David. You want to give me a ride in the grants? Give me a ride. Go see the doctor. We'll get you some apples. Hey, you, you can't chew on my back, all right? You got to be cool. Look, look what he's already done. Look at that. <laughs> get over to a place where we can set up camp for the night. Um, it's probably best that I get off my knee right away because I'm going to be scrambling over some uh, boulders tomorrow. And uh, it's difficult uh, when you're well, much less with a pack. So, um, and I feel really bad for these guys. Are we going to make our 20 anyway or close? So we're not going to make our 20, which is pretty bad, and I feel bad about that, but I'm trying to make the right move here. I don't want to let them down, but uh, it is what it is. You know, things happen out here. Okay, so we're uh, heading into Grants along this railroad near 117. Uh, it's a little better on my leg. These are the end of days. These boots will not see another day on my feet or the frizzes. Will they? Yeah. It's done. 180 miles, that's in the rock lights. Doctor said, get off trail. <laughs> right. A uh, uh, few days and we're off and running. That's all there is to it.
Okay, so we broke camp and now uh, currently on the way to uh, the first water cache. Doing a little solo hiking today. And uh, 2,500 foot climb up to, uh, to Summit Mount Taylor. So I'm uh, going to have a good time. Get some good footage. Loving this. Love being out here. Okay, uh, I stopped at the water cache and I am following the CDT route, as you can see. Um, but uh, uh, I don't think that I'm climbing up to Mount Taylor at this point. I hope I didn't miss a turn off somewhere. <sighs> Let's just hope I can get on there. Okay, there's Mount Taylor. The best I can tell, I've overshot the runway a little bit. So uh, I've come up on this, uh, I believe, an ATV road. And I'm going to go ahead and chance it. And I'm going to go to top on this. And uh, maybe I'll see them up there. Maybe I won't. Okay, uh, followed up a little while. It doesn't look like it connects. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and track down the CDT trail. And maybe I'll go up and on the other side. Wow, could have been better marked. I don't know, maybe it's me. Okay, so uh, I definitely missed Mount Taylor. I'm just going around it, it seems, on the trail. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, uh, they left early without me this morning. Uh, they were going to the water cache and up to Mount Taylor. I told them I'd meet with them. I, um, I had to take care of my legs, get some uh, ibuprofen in me and do a few things. Um, when I got up to the water cache, I filled up, continued on with the CDT signs. Apparently I missed the turn for uh, Mount Taylor. However, I wasn't worried. Uh, at least I was on the official route. Um, as the day progressed, I have not been able to find anything to where I'm at. And then I noticed a special clause in there on Jonathan Lay Maps. And the official route around this area, he failed to mark. So I'm more or less at a guessing game now. I just checked my water. I've got a half a liter. And uh, that's not a lot of water. And uh, I don't know where the next water source is. So... Um, Getting tricky. Getting tricky. Okay, I did some resection from that peak there. It's, there's a radio tower on it. There's another one right there. And then there's a third right here. And the best that I can tell is that I'm about right here. So if this dips in just up here onto a trail again, I know I'm in the right area. And that'll give me about... What does this say? Uh, about 10 miles to the next possible water, and I have a half liter. You gotta love these days. Okay, so everything seems to be right. I'm on the official route. I haven't seen anybody got a long route. Do okay. some night hiking. I think we're right on. Let's not go 10 miles. This tank from way over at the road, and I'm hoping there's water in it. Need some water. Oh man. Oh. Empty. Oh, shit. Well, after 
looking into that uh, tar tank, and we're turning back to the trail and walking a, a little while, I heard the name Yo-Yo! And I turned around and lo and behold, it was Frisbee and tourists. And they have water. <laughs> At about uh, 13 to the next water cache, we're going to be going up 239 here. So, uh, had about a half a liter of water. Uh, I feel pretty good about it. Had a pretty decent night's rest. Uh, was on the trail at 7.30, so... My leg doesn't feel any better or any worse than it did yesterday. I'm just going to keep right on rolling. Okay, so we're leaving um, Circle A. And uh, we're going to go hit the library, get a couple things taken care of in town, and I'm out of here. Um, iced down my leg all night long, uh, reduced my weight the best I can, and uh, look, I'm going to Canada. turned around and we uh, hiked for a few miles this morning and wound up right where we camped. Um, so uh, what we did was we did some cross country and I used uh, uh, orientation navigation and brought us right up to here. So we're back on track to the trail northbound and um, we got here to take a little bit of a rest and he received a signal on his cell phone and his dad's in the hospital so we're going to see what happens here. here in Abiquiu, New Mexico, and um, I'm staying at the Ghost Ranch, just on the outside of Abiquiu, and it's 26,000 acres in size, and uh, it wasn't always named the Ghost Ranch, it was actually a dude ranch prior to its name change, and uh, apparently there was two brothers that were feuding over cattle. Now, one of these brothers murdered the other one, and so there was a hanging that ensued by the townspeople and they hung him from a tree here on location and uh, they said his ghost haunted the place so they renamed it um, in about 1880 to 1881 the Ghost Ranch and that's the story behind Ghost Ranch okay so I'm here at uh, 
Ghost Ranch, and um, I've been icing down my leg a lot, taking the anti-inflammatories and the medication as prescribed by the doctor. And uh, this will be my fourth day here. And while the tendonitis that initiated the problem um, is getting much better, the secondary problem with the knee uh, really isn't getting that much better. Okay, so I woke up this morning and I opened my tent and found this bag. Hi, maybe you can use this. Or put it in the hiker box if not. Cheers, Owl H. Okay, it's Friday, June 7th. I'm here at the uh, Ghost Ranch and uh, I've been icing my leg down. I went into t uh, town with uh, Gary, uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico, and Santa Fe, New Mexico last night. It was a nice little outing and uh, had a good night's sleep. Charging my electronics, I iced down my leg this morning, wrapped it up, and uh, I'm going to make for Chama. Okay, so uh, I got into Chamina tonight. Um, uh, I hit the grocery store right before they closed. I was able to get a couple of uh, pre-cooked pork chops and some buns and some Arizona sweet iced tea and razors and shaving cream. So I got to go into a clinic that's about 10 miles south of here and uh, the lady here said that she would actually take me up there. So that's really good of her. And um, I'm hoping I can get a cortisone shot for my leg, maybe some pain medications. And I'm looking forward to Colorado. Um, I shouldn't have made it this far, but uh, I did. I've been actually rock and rolling pretty good. And uh, I hope I don't get any bad news from the doctor.
All right, it turns out in northern New Mexico they have these RTD buses that'll take you from town to town. They're free, and uh, they jam up the radio, so if you don't get jacked for everything you've got, uh, seems like a pretty good way to get around. So I took the RTD in from Chama and Tespanola, and now I'm taking it into Santa Fe, where I'll take a train into Albuquerque. And uh, we'll see how that works out. Okay, so I made it up here to Cumbers Pass. Um, we're at look, what looks like uh, some old stables. Um, they're right here next to the railroad tracks. And I run into my first hiker on the trail, Christian. Viking. <laughs> <laughs> they call him Viking. Um, so uh, we're gonna make do here. It's just like a lean-to on the Appalachian Trail. It should suit us well tonight, and we're gonna hit it tomorrow. Okay. Um, it's a really heavy duty climb up out of Cumbers Pass. I'm trying to get acclimated, it's very tough, but I'm loving being out here. Look out here, it's beautiful, look at that. Just absolutely gorgeous, but I gotta tell you, there is a lot of snow on the ground. I've been doing a lot of post holding, it's slowing things up tremendously. Um, but hey, I got a good attitude. Uh, this is what I signed up for and uh, got to rock on. Not, not at all thrilled about what I have to do today. Um, about 200 yards uh, that way is some switchbacks to go up on the uh, crest of the mountains. Uh, that's where I need to be and get past most of the snowpack. Um, there is snowpack between here and there. It's about four feet deep. It is uh, a big struggle. Um, it'd take me hours to get through there, and it's very unsafe. I have no idea about the footing. Um, I'm thinking about going up and around, uh, and uh, that may even prove to be impossible, according to some people that I passed yesterday. As you can see, I've hit jackpot. I'm walking on it fairly smoothly. Uh, I trust it at this point and uh, it's been working out. was going to be a rainstorm turned out to be a hailstorm. Coming out pretty good. Lightning's happening. See it down there on the ground? Okay, I've got about uh, 100 yards to do, and I've already come a couple hundred yards. I'm post holing all the way. This is really arduous, takes the time off of the day. We we'll sated down that mountain there. It was the quickest way down. there this is my way up the mountain I didn't want to come um, this way too fast because uh, scares the shit out of them they know when you're coming but they're a rare sight to be seen I think I got a little bit of a close-up one might be a little blurry I stretched the camera out um, but he's beautiful it's good to know that we're still seeing really good wildlife out here I'm hoping that the ice will stay like this till I get to Pagosa Springs it's been great walking on this. A little slower, but a lot faster than what I've been having to do. Now up to this point, I was feeling very confident. But that was about to change. You see this guy right here? I knew I'd die on it. But somehow I made it. And I learned a valuable lesson in doing so. That was the route I took. 
come down that wash there, and then I just save it down a little bit, then go all the way down. I got this to show for it, and a slight sprained ankle, but I stopped to put on my micro spikes. You're not going to imagine what they're asking me to do now. This would be great with no snow, but uh, this is downright dangerous with these snow fields around. And what I'm fixing to do is, I don't think I've ever been so scared in all my life with everything I've done already. Okay, so uh, that's another point to the lower route. I saw a bunch of footprints going down there. I guess they were really worried about it up here. Of course, um, I've just got to make it up over here and it looks like just a bit of uh, ice walking. So you were a little bit ahead of uh, me and Southern, and uh, we got here, and your pack was here, and uh, you had a funny story to tell us. So oh, yeah, why don't you I'm just hanging out, like I do my normal thing, pull over to relieve myself. So I climbed up the hill, dug a hole, and you know my pack's right by the road here. So just as I get ready to do my thing, there comes three four wheelers, and they see my pack, so they stop and you know, they look up at the hill, look up at me. I'm mid squat. Just... Well, I gotta tell you, I'm trying to get a ride into uh, Pagosa Springs and the people here in Colorado don't seem to be as friendly with uh, the hitchhiking, but uh, we're gonna plug along. Uh, we've already separated as a group. We're going on our separate ways. It's a lot easier to hitch that way, but uh, hey, you know, you gotta deal with the punches. I could be here three hours, I don't know. Okay, so I made it into Pagosa Springs. I've got my hotel. It's here at Pinewood Inn. They're the lowest rates. They're 50 bucks a night. Cost me 110 total. I'm happy to be here. I'm safe. I'm gonna get myself some pizza and a lot of fluids and work out what I'm gonna do now because I've just talked to everybody here. It seems like all the hikers are here and uh, everybody ass asses are puckered up. I mean, it's terrible up there. I'm trying to get out of Pagosa Springs up the Wolf Creek Pass. Can't wait to get back in the mountains. I miss it. However, I love Pagosa Springs. So it's the first morning out of Pagosa Springs and I'm about to hit the high elevations this morning and uh, we have two days of scattered thunderstorms uh, which means I have to go high and be in the most dangerous section. I'm hoping that the sun peaks out. We've already had some hail this morning and um, I don't know it looks rough. I'm just gonna have to be prepared to uh, make camp fast if it uh, gets dangerous well uh, my food bag has rips all in it and this is my sleeping bag container and it's just ripped on me so uh, safe to say um, I think when I get to Lake City I gotta buy a set of bags so equipment failures happening out here and uh, I'm not happy about how quick it's taken place. That's a huge drop into the abyss. Well, I'm at about 11.3 and um, 
we're trucking across some snow here I've got it early in the morning so it's a little bit easier and you can see what I'm going up to just beautiful the lake's frozen there'll be no water resupply here that's all right I got a little left to get me to the next place then I'll have to become resourceful well this has been a very brutal year but if you don't embrace it you'll hate it I love it I mean you know this is just gonna be glorious I mean you get through something like this and you're pretty much a badass <laughs> What we're doing is we have to uh, first of all as you can see there's some pretty major post holing here um, then I've got to get past this rock field and um, off in the distance you can see the footprints um, that's a pretty pretty good degree um, should be okay um, but even the trees are falling with the snow against them and you can see along that ridge that it goes uh, getting a little there getting a little there this is where they're pushing us on this range right here. I'll be going up on the other side of that and it's going to be much more dramatic. But uh, look at this. Straight down. I do not want to fall here. I got to be cool. These are the conditions on the south side of the mountain. I have a trail. It's awesome. Um, but if you look right over here, that's what the north side of the mountains look like. Deep packed snow. So when I cross this bed and I get around on the north side, I think I'm going to be in uh, some thick stuff. As you can see, the, uh, the trail is starting to lead us on up over there. Now you see these fingers coming down from the side of that mountain. I believe I'm going to have to traverse each one of those to get up there. It's already looking a little dangerous up here. Uh, that's much, much more ice than uh, the way it looks here. That's much later. I'm starting to get nervous. It's not as bad as I thought. There is no trail going through these patches of snow and up there. It's actually worse. Uh, this actually goes up and scissors up to the top, switch back, back and forth, only to a wall of ice. You see that? All right. I'm about all the way to the top. I got to tell you, that was very intimidating. Looks like we'll be finishing up this last little leg and just cropping in over on the other side of the rock. By the way, check out that backdrop there, huh? Not bad, eh? We'll check this out. Talk about straight down, huh? Yeah. I'm up there, baby. About 12,500 feet in altitude. Gotta love this. Scary, but awesome, man. This is awesome. Boy, I could do anything in the real world. Okay, as you can see, we're here at about 12,200 feet. The uh, view is absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. Beautiful mountain ranges all the way around. I'm loving this. I am having a little bit of a difficulty with the altitude, uh, mostly with the uphill. Uh, but, um, hey, you got to work for it. It's beautiful. Okay, so we're at 12,500 feet. Check that out, baby. Woo! That is gorgeous. Yeah. Makes me want a beer. All right.
right, so I've made it three quarters of the way past this. It's fairly steep. I'm glad some people have been through here before so they can cut into this thing. One slide, whoo! You going down, son. You don't want to do that. I ain't got nothing better to do. Holy shnikes. Woo! Let's go tackle that. Okay, um, I don't know what happened last night. Um, look up at about one o'clock. Felt like I couldn't breathe. Been feeling kind of like that uh, all day yesterday, but it got worse. And uh, I'm over 12,000 feet, and it's going to get worse. Oh, God. I've had all kinds of things going through my mind. I've been up uh, all night. And uh, I think the best thing for me to do is to uh, take off early and uh, try to catch up with that group that came by yesterday. There was about three of them. And uh, see if I can't uh, deal with the little company for a little while. Any way you look at it, i got to move forward. There's no bailing out around here. Okay, so uh, we tried rocking along the side of this ice wall, and it looks like we're going to have to go over the top of it. And I uh, wanted to give you a little scale, but they don't seem to be trucking. There they are. There they come. Pretty big ice wall. So it looks like we're going to have to go over the top of this thing. Yeah, here's another disappointed hiker. He was hoping we could walk beside it and traverse the side of a mountain, but that ain't happening. We're going over the top. Good. Let's go have some fun, huh? Yeah, yeah. Still think we walked to Canada? Okay, I'm down at 9,000 feet. I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, but it has occurred to me that although this is probably the best decision, I mean, as far as my health goes, it's also put me in a pretty precarious situation. I've been doing a lot of serious uh, river crossings. One was real bad last night. It almost got me. And uh, my weatherproof containers are about had it. Uh, one's ripped all the way apart. And uh, this is not on my maps. And my GPS has it at very, very, very low resolution at best. Sometimes just a blur. And I have to ID on my way out of here. And uh, it's a little bit scary. I'm out there. And a number of things can happen. And uh, I'd be in big... <laughs> Nobody's going to run up behind me like it would be on the CDT. And... Uh, Got me a little scared, a little worried. But uh, listen, I'll just man up and just follow the water. Eventually I'll run into somebody. And uh, I think this was a tough call the way around, but uh, no way I could, I wasn't breathing right up there. I mean, it was real bad. Um, to a point, no sleep. And so uh, I'm just gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to make it happen. I don't recommend this for the faint of heart. I don't recommend this for many people at all, but, uh, hey, follow the water. Going across country, he's had to climb around neck. Pretty cool, huh? 500 bucks. All I got to do is tow it out of here. Must be 40 pounds. I'm not going to do that. But 500 bucks. All I got to do is tow it out. See that? That is not a trail. That is a game trail. And I've been following them through this place. And uh, I did about 27 crossings of the river and followed the game trail. And guess what? It kept me away from all the, um, uh, the falls and the cliffs. And uh, I've been able to navigate my way through. So you got to trust some uh, game trails. Okay, so we got a fence here. 
gives me a small bit of optimism. There's a sign over here that says, please close the gate. This gate hasn't been closed in years. Okay, so uh, I've just come up on what I thought was two tracks, but it's ATV tracks and I'm seeing boot marks. So things are looking good. Okay, so that's what it looks like. That's what I came in out of under these farms here. I didn't know it yet, but this road was taking me into Creed, not Lake City, which meant I would have to do a long, long road walk into Salida. But before that, I'd have to get drunk with the mayor of Creed. While my mileage on the highway was better, I would have to carry extra water. There'd be no sleep. There was no place to camp. No place to do my business. No place to escape the heat. I couldn't wait to get back into the mountains. over to Monarch Pass. Um, you really don't have to go all the way into uh, Salida for resupply. It's quite a long walk. So I'm um, at Twin Lakes and uh, next stop is Mount Albert. It is the second highest mountain in the contiguous U.S. And uh, let's hope that uh, my uh, altitude sickness is at bay. Okay, so as you're aware, um, I was suffering from high altitude sickness. I did some road walking. I got back up into elevation. I felt it a little bit. Uh, it was kind of creeping on, but uh, I was in Twin Lakes before I knew it and felt really good there. Maybe it was the atmosphere, the beer, and the food, I don't know. But I felt co good and confident, and I was gonna go and tackle Mount Albert. But uh, on the way up there, I experienced some pretty bad, bad sickness there. So what I'm gonna do is I found, right down here at the uh, Mount Massive Trailhead, a nice little campsite here. And I'm gonna camp here for the night and uh, give it another day, take in a lot more fluids, make sure I'm well fed, and uh, then I'm going to leave my stuff here and take like a fanny pack situation and uh, go up there without weight and see if I can handle that. Uh, but that's going to tell me a lot of whether or not I have to road walk out of here into Leadville and stay low or if I'm going to be able to continue on on the, uh, uh, you know, the organized trail. I hope the organized trail, it's beautiful around here. I'm really enjoying myself. I just wish this damn high altitude sickness would go away and allow me to really fully enjoy it. Well, I don't believe that this is permit areas, but they set their tent up over there, but are saying that's a reserve for the entire area and I have to move. So, um, just gonna have to move down and be the bigger person because I don't want to get into it with them.
Okay, so I don't have a weather report, but the problem is, is I woke up this morning to climb Elbert. The sun will not come out from behind the clouds. And uh, over the horizon, it's pretty gray. Um, I don't think it's going to burn off. It might develop into a storm. I'm not going to try and climb Elbert. I'll take another day to acclimate. And we'll see what happens. Uh, with any luck, it is a possibility that... Uh, Around noon, I'll make sure there's no noon or afternoon thunderstorms coming in. It'll clear up, look good, and I can climb it this afternoon. We'll see. I'm glad I didn't go up today. Um, it would have been miserable. Ice cold, probably a little bit of hail up there, sleet. Um, it's raining now here. And uh, good call. One more day of acclimation as well. Hopefully it's a good day tomorrow. Okay, there you have it. I'm on the approach trail to Mount Elbert, 14,433 feet. Uh, the altitude sickness isn't feeling as bad today. Um, I got a good possibility of making it up. Just ran into TG, a fellow CDT hiker, and he's pushing on uh, to uh, Grand Lake after resupplying in Leadville. So I'll probably see him further up the trail. I'm just going to take my time today and lollygag up there and down and hopefully the altitude sickness won't bother me too much. So here we go. the top of Mount Albert. I'm 2,000 feet above base camp. I'm 1,000 feet on the approach trail. Got 3,000 feet to go so far. The altitude sickness is holding check pretty good. Uh, a little easy to fatigue, that's understandable. Okay, only a few hundred feet to go. Uh, looks like it's been a little bit crowded today around this time. Uh, we got a few dark clouds coming in. Hopefully it'll blow by like the last bit did. If not, I'm racing down the hill. How cool is that, huh? Only a few hundred more feet. And I'm on top of the world. Well, this world and my world, that's it. acclimation when I made it. Uh, the site is beautiful. Look at that. Are you kidding me? How glorious is that? You could climb Whitney. You're not going to get that view. Okay, as you can see, there's a lightning storm that way, and there's also one that way. They're probably going to converge down in on us, so I got to get my ass down from here. Hey, little guy. How you doing, buddy? Yeah? You climbing Mount Elbert, too? Huh? Yes, you are. As you can see, it was not a rainstorm. I'm actually having snow dumped on me right now. How cool is that, huh? Well, June, late June. Not sure of the date, but Late June and uh, snow. Okay, back to the trailhead. Took five hours. Total round trip. Not bad considering I had altitude sickness. So if you're gonna do the CDT, don't miss this, it's worth the day. Okay, I'm leaving uh, Leadville. If you ever wondered why you have a hard time breathing here, it's because it's the highest incorporated city in the US and it's on par with the same altitude of La Paz Bolivia if that gives you any idea nice place a lot of great 14ers good place to visit
gas station in the middle of nowhere. I'm in between Winter Park and Grand Lake. Uh, I gotta tell you, um, I'm a little worried now because as you can see, the land is getting barren and it's gonna be a lot harder to stealth camp. Um, and it has been anyway. And it's real hard to keep enough water on me as well. You know, you don't have running streams and things, you know, all over the place here. Uh, so I'm filling up at gas stations and little stores and little hotels I see. And uh, I gotta tell you, the blisters are starting to really hammer down on my feet. My knees are hurting, my ankles are hurting, but uh, hey, this is what I signed up for. If I can't do the high route because of altitude sickness, you know, I gotta road walk it. And uh, we're talking, this has been over a hundred mile trek and I've probably still got another uh, 20 or 30 miles to go, but I've been pounding out some good mileage. Um, I'm doing roughly about three to four miles an hour, sometimes even a little more. I'm really shocked at how fast I've been on the street, uh, which is really cool. Um, but it's loud, it's noisy, cars going by, there's trash, it's hard, it's hot. Uh, it's just not a pleasure. It's not what I really wanted to do, but uh, I'll see how I feel in Grand Lake. Hopefully I'll be able to get up into the uh, altitude again. It'll be great. And uh, looking forward to that, but I'm at about a little over 7,000 feet now. I've been under 8,000 feet for a while, except for a real strong uh, over the mountain trek, which was grinding. It was a, terrible. Um, but I had to get over that so that I could stay low. So, uh, uh. road walk into Steamboat Springs it's getting dark and uh, there really is no place to stealth it around here so I'm gonna have to hike into the night it's just the way it is gotta love it though it was a beautiful sunset I'm happy to be moving forward and uh, really excited about the rest of the trip Oh, I'm having a great time. Okay, so I have gotten a little rest here at the uh, Windy Gap Wildlife uh, Observation Area. Uh, not much. Um, I'm just not, um, you know, able to sleep here. Maybe I'm too uncomfortable. It's not cold. Um, but uh, it is it is uncomfortable so I think I'm gonna pound out some more miles it is a little risky because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find another place to uh, sleep but uh, hey that's the way it is out here and uh, I'm just gonna take the risk okay so I'm coming into hot sulfur springs uh, it's been grueling it's in the a.m. I think my prime directive is gonna be to find a place where I can camp either undetected or in a campground. Boy, that was a tough, tough walk. 
but uh, I'm glad to be around somewhere that it's not all light free because that was a dark stretch. Kremlin. Um, I had to uh, stealth camp, which worked out pretty good. Had a good breakfast this morning, and uh, now I'm on a 52-mile hike to Steamboat Springs. Okay, so that's four deer carcasses that I've seen here in a period of about uh, 100 yards. So it got to kind of show you one thing. Well, actually two things. If you drive through here, your odds of hitting a deer seem to be likely high. Number two, deer don't learn. Okay, so I've also been noticing quite a bit of these car tags and uh, I'm up to about eight deer carcasses. So that tells me when they hit the deer, they lose their tags. It's gotta be it. Okay, so I'm in Steamboat Springs and I ask everybody what the place is to go to for pizza and they all recommend Beaujou's. Now, um, I got to do a little investigation and this was featured on uh, Man vs. Food. And uh, as I remember, they were really large. So I'm going to go on the small side, but not too small. And we're going to check them out, have a couple beers and uh, see what this is all about. Although it's hard to take time off the trail, tomorrow was going to be the 4th of July parade and I wasn't going to miss it. on the other side of town where I'm hopefully going to be able to get my maps printed. Okay, so the UPS store is closed. I got to get a little creative, find a way to print out the rest of my maps for Wyoming. So, spend some time doing that and hopefully I'll be able to do that or I think I'll be here another day. 
So I'm walking down the road ready to get back up the rub Rabbit Ears Pass and guess who I run into? Birdie! Birdie and Tibetan. How cool is that? We're going to have a barbecue tonight. Sounds pretty awesome. Drink that? some beer. I've been drinking any beer in this town because I was solo. Life is good. So I'm cruising along. Check that out, huh? How awesome is that? Uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to walk all the way up the Rabbit Ears Pass. I have not been able to get a ride. It is the 4th of July, so I do understand that, but uh, we're gonna keep trying and we're gonna see how it works out. Okay, so I finally get a ride up here to Rabbit Ears Pass. I get out of the car, get my stuff out the back, and I said, all right, later on, buddy. But it didn't come out that way. It came out. Bye bye, Duddy. What the hell does that mean? That's what the trail looks like north of Steamboat. It's full of water and mud. And we still have a lot of ice on the trail as well, snow. But uh, gotta love it. Can't be easy or it wouldn't be epic. As you can see, there's been nothing but snow. And there's a lake up ahead, so I'm gonna do a water resupply and bed down for tonight there. You can see there's a lot of snow on the trail, a lot of mud and water. The mosquitoes are crazy. If you slow down, you belong to them, deet or no deet. Extremely brutal trail this year, but an epic journey. The fastest method for drying your socks on trail on your trekking poles. Okay, so I've come up from to the pass, and um, I'm just in the middle of the CDT area here. When you come up from encampment, and look here, everybody, welcome, Daryl and Gerald James. Dave Quitter, Saratoga, look at that. No hotel tonight. I got nice lodgings. How cool is that? Okay, so up here at the parking, it looks like there's an owl house, and you know what that means? A possible free toilet paper resupply. You gotta do what you gotta do. CPR will work. So if you come into Saratoga, uh, just on the outside of encampment, which is worth it really because you could get free showers, which is pretty awesome. And they're not cold showers, they're warm. And do you want to know why? Because they're located right off of their own hot spring. This thing's definitely a lot hotter than 104 degrees. They got one for the kiddies over there and it's free. 
that's what it looks like out here in the middle of nowhere uh, no more snow out here now it's blazing heat and dust and it's a whole different story out here okay so I'm in Rawlings Wyoming and as you can see look right behind me over my shoulder you see that hiker trash coming yeah ran into birdie in Tibetan today and Viking is here who I started the trail with here she is. She's got a, she's got a heavy I dose of information. Need Check this out. I everyone because this is going to go in quick. The reason all the motels in here are rapidly filling up is construction. It's a boom town. So we ha I found the best room, but I, and I love it because of the paintings on the wall. <laughs> but I don't think that um, paintings on the wall sells her. Paintings are beautiful, but there's a there are four beds. Four beds, four beds and one room. Are you going to be okay with that? I think I could be okay with that, but there, there is a, there is no continental breakfast, and there is no laundry service. But we got to do that. Well, we have to see what the guys say. Where are they? They're inside. They're doing their things, you know. Okay, because they're going to sell out. She's only got. Yeah, we got to hurry up and get on a room. They're going to sell class, out. It's so a boomtown construction. You know what they need to construct? Hotels. Hitch there. Make the Nelson Lakes a loop. The TA goes straight, it's a true hike. One day you're left there. Make a round the, the, round the lakes trail. I'll drink to that. If she drinks to that, that means things are gonna get worse. So I'm in Lander, and uh, this hotel has a jacuzzi, showers, and a campsite out back for $10. Can't go wrong. into groceries into town and uh, she brought me out here to the pass and we wound up uh, looking for Smudge and uh, the other guys and we did run into them and uh, she has a friend that's come in and looky there so we've got two support vehicles here and I've already warned them I'm calling the cops I gotta get a restraining order they keep following me around let's just get out of control <laughs>
Uh, so you look, we returned. I was just addressing you. We returned. Uh, we were going to Walgreens to fill a script, and Larry, the guy I just met, just had a massive heart failure behind the wheel. I did, uh, I did mouth to mouth until they got here. He still had a pulse. Then he stopped with even with the pulse. So I'm gonna have to get with you guys later. Okay, so we have dinner at Arthur Bryant's. Really great guy, Larry. Um, we go to fill a prescription at uh, CVS. They don't have the medication, so we went to Walgreens. And when we rounded the corner, we started drifting over right onto the sidewalk um, because Larry went into critical um, heart failure. And uh, so um, I was able to do mouth to mouth. And he, he still had a pulse, um, but it was very weak and erratic, and he was having a hard time breathing. And it would, he finally stopped. I gave him mouth to mouth. Um, was ready to pull him out of the car to give him a uh, full out CPR because his pulse dropped way below uh, what it should have and was having a real bad problem and then stopped. Um, that's when the medical team arrived and took it over. Uh, they've got him here. They were not able to get a, a heartbeat on the, you know, the time they were on soon. So um, I'm just having all kinds of medical issues with people all the way around me. And so um, just, you just pray for this guy. I mean, really good guy. I just met him. He said it was awesome to get to know me and then he collapsed. So I'm here at the Old Faithful Geyser. We're going to be working our way north. We're going to continue on with the CDT as planned. But I want to take you through the main part of the park so that you can see what's actually going on off trail. Just get over there before it blows.
Okay, north of uh, Anaconda here, head north. Um, ready to get out of the hills. I've left my charge pack somewhere. I gotta have them mailed to me. Tired of these hills. Montana, uh, got up to the trailhead uh, later in the uh, evening last night, tried to get out, couldn't, uh, took me a few hours this morning to get in here, got my resupply, so I'll go back to trailhead, head north. Almost there, almost there. Okay, so um, I'm leaving Lincoln, uh, Lincoln and I'm on the way up to the pass so that I can go ahead and uh, get back on the CDT and I'm here at the ranger station they have a grizzly bear exhibit now he's supposed to be about 800 pounds or so uh, did about seven thousand dollars worth of damage to the pickup truck that hit it um, but uh, he was there's only been one photo of this guy while he was alive and it was done by a security cam and uh, we're gonna bring it to you how about that pretty cool huh How'd you want to walk into him in the woods? Scare the hell out of you, huh? Scares the hell out of me right now and he's stuff. Nah, just a pansy. I could take him. Look at the size of those claws, huh? Look at the size of those claws. Man, you let those rake you? Man, you're gonna need some serious stitches. You might need a whole new appendage. He doesn't look mean though, he's probably a cool guy. Just messed around with trash cans and Tried to play dodgeball with a pickup truck, but it didn't work out. about to go into Mariah Pass. I hear some cars and uh, it's real right where Summit is. 
and we're just uh, west of Glacier National, East Glacier. And if we cross, when we cross the street and the railroads, we'll be into Glacier National Park. Looking forward to that. Uh, woo! Almost at the end, guys. Almost at the end. Looking forward to that. But I'm also looking forward to Glacier National. I am alone. So uh, a little worried about the bear situation. But uh, shouldn't be too bad this late in the season. Uh, they'll probably be sluggish. And as long as they make enough noise and uh, smell bad enough, they won't want to mess with me. Okay, I see a railroad coming up. No, not a railroad, but a road coming up here. Let's see what's going on. What is this? Okay, let's see what's going on here. Well, there's the highway. What is this here? Oh, look at that. Look at those beautiful mountains. I am definitely looking forward to East Glacier. Woo, look at that. Yeah, baby, how cool is that? Okay, I came in from this road here. There's a tunnel that passes over it next to the uh, East Glacier uh, Amtrak station. And uh, um, anyway, the resupply wasn't the best and I was expecting a little more. I thought it was a bigger place, but it wasn't. Uh, but anyway, if I hit back up on the track, came up the road here and I'm hoping to get a room up here at the Mountain Pine Hotel. Um, let's see, it says it's got vacancy, so I'm gonna go in and get a I'm gonna go in and get a rest and uh, hit the trail tomorrow. take a good video file of any of these mountains got these uh, vergas hanging all over me can't see a damn thing uh, it's too bad because Glacier National Park supposed to be epically beautiful when I was coming in here it was just gorgeous but uh, can't see it now so but anyway let's move along surprise a few miles ago I realized uh, I didn't bring my passport my passports I left it at my friend's house so I had to take the other route and I'm gonna show that to you um, I'm coming up this route here this route right here now the other way would have been up here camp here and then taking it up to this I then on up to Prince of Wales Hotel However, I've got to go all the way around here and on up here to the Canadian border on Highway 17. So, 
the same shuttle, as I understand, will pick you up in both places. So I can still get the shuttle here, and it is a longer route, and it seems to be a lot of uphill. But, uh, hey man, that's the price you pay. And uh, it's still the northern terminus, and it's still Canada. Okay, some of this rain is starting to subside a bit, and the... Uh, the Vargas are still hanging out over the top of the mountains, but you're able to see them. They're super high. And uh, so we're just going along the uh, Belly River here up towards the Canadian border. And uh, hey, we're almost there. I think I'm about, uh, I'd say about six, seven miles away from completion. And I'm looking forward to that. It's damn cold out here. Damn sure is cold, it's bitter, it's wet, chills you to the bone. It's been epic though. I've seen everything except for a bear. Thank God. Oh, and by the way, when I was coming into the park, I picked up one of these guys here. If you're going to be hiking solo, uh, pick yourself up a hiking stick with a bell, or at least get one that hangs off your pack, uh, especially if you're solo. Yes, we got to get to the border.